Okay, making his return to the Sleepers Media YouTube channel is the one and only Kevin Sweeney. Sweeney has been a guest on the Sleepers podcast a couple times, notably after the Champions Classic when we ate deep dish pizza at an Airbnb till three in the morning, breaking down everything that we saw. Uh, this should be fun, though. For the first time since we've done these previews and recaps, we're bringing in the big guns. Sweeney's here to help us out. So first off, thank you for being here. Today, we're going to be talking Dayton, Nevada. First round matchup here, Dayton, the seven seed, Nevada, the 10 seed. Uh, I got to be honest, this is one of the games I'm least excited for. No disrespect to either of these teams, but um, I I'll just lay it out how I truly feel. I've been pretty unimpressed with Dayton this year, and I know you've seen them a lot. So I, I want you to tell me if my concerns are real. This team did not win the A-10 regular season. They did not win the A-10 tournament. They have one win against a team in the NCAA tournament field. That was over, or excuse me, two, Longwood and Oakland. And Duquesne. Now I missed Duquesne. Couple, I'm very wrong. They have four wins against NCAA tournament teams. That's still bad. That's still less than Nevada has. Am I right to be concerned that Dayton isn't who a lot of people want them to be? So, look, like, I think Dayton, Dayton did, did its work early, right? Like, they got into the non-conference. They beat... Uh, several high major teams, teams that didn't wind up being tournament teams, but teams that boosted their resume because those were road and neutral games, right? They beat LSU, they beat St. John's, they won at SMU, and they played Cincinnati in a uh, neutral road game, if you will, I believe at a uh, arena in Cincinnati. And, and then they, they won that game. So by doing all of that, then they were just in kind of don't screw it up mode. And they didn't screw it up, right? To, to their credit, they went 14 and four in the A-10. They had a harder schedule in A-10 play than the champions, Loyola and Richmond. Uh, they had to play on the road at Richmond, on the road at Loyola, uh, on the road at BCU, uh, and then ran into a Duquesne team that's super hot. But they, yeah, obviously they had beaten before, but, you know, a Duquesne team that, you know, I believe won 15 of 18 close the regular season. Like, I don't think any of the results in a vacuum were that concerning with Dayton. I do think bigger picture, you're right to be concerned because I don't think they're playing their best basketball right now. And I think that they're, I I think especially with where they are in the backcourt, once Michael Malachi Smith, excuse me, went out, like I, I just think they're a team that's very easy to prepare for, right? Deron Holmes is really good, right? Deron Holmes is one of the best players in the country. He can take over a game. He gets to the free throw line. He can pass. He rebounds. He can shoot. Like he, he there is not a hole in Deron Holmes' game. But the inconsistencies from the backcourt, particularly from Kobe Elvis, who's a guy they really relied on to, to create offense, have really, really hurt them. And, and so when you can muck it up and play physical and disrupt them, I mean, that was the recipe for Loyola when they beat him at, at Gentile in Chicago, you know, two, three weeks ago. Like, if you can get physical with Dayton, if you can turn them over, if you can get them out of their rhythm and make it be, make, make everyone but Duran kill you you have a good chance to win. And so I think, I think that's what has made it feel as though they're, you know, unimpressive is just down the stretch kind of just feels like the book is out on them and they don't feel as hard to play against. They're not overly deep. They're not overly dynamic outside of Holmes. Yes, they can shoot. And yes, they have one of the best bigs in the country, but they're not a team that I, I'm like overwhelmed by watching on film. Yeah. It's partially an eye test thing for me. I just, I, I don't believe in the players in their backcourt and maybe that's harsh. Um, I know they've, they've certainly had, upswings and downswings throughout the year. But man, you watch that Duquesne game in the conference tournament, like Elvis and Bennett combined for nine points as they're starting backcourt. Like I, those just aren't guys that I, I feel comfortable. Like will step up in a big moment and make a play that you need uh, to me. Anytime I've watched Dayton and I, I will say I have caught them in their losses more than I've caught them in their wins. Just somehow, if I'm watching a Dayton game, it seems like it's because I flip it on because they're in trouble and I am watching things snowball. But to me, it, it seems like the only plan when things snowball is, hey, Duran, go save us. And as good as he is, he's not exactly a give him a ball, get out of the way guy. And there have been quite a few moments I've seen this year where he almost gets himself into trouble knowing he needs to go elevate this team and save them, pull them out of the mud when they're in trouble. Um, how is Nevada going to match up with – Deron Holmes like do they have the players inside to make it difficult on him I think they do um because they have you know first they have Nick Davidson who's a very skilled six foot nine big guy who just finds ways to draw fouls and he'll play the four sometimes he'll play the five sometimes um and when he's the 
when he's the four, I think they're going to be able to post him against um, against Nate Santos. And I think they'll have success there. And when they play smaller and play Davidson at the five, I think there's a chance he gets Holmes in foul trouble, right? Like I think the game in a lot of ways will be which of these two skilled bigs is on the floor more. I probably trust Davidson to, to be on the floor more than Holmes. Um, I think the, you know, the depth is nice too, right? They have KJ Himes who they can throw out people. Tylen Pope's like a fourth or a fifth year guy from Tulane originally. who's just like a wide body plays hard rebounds, doesn't do anything offensively, but just like a competitive guy who can help them out. Right. This is a bigger physical team. They're used to playing. I mean, look, most of the Mountain West plays too big. I mean, across the board. So they won't be afraid of Dayton's size. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily think of Nevada as like an overly explosive team. Right? You know, out in Vegas last week, saw them play, you know, play pretty poorly against Colorado State, quite frankly. But, um, you know, I, I do think what they do have is size across the board. You know, they can really switch because they play 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", kind of all through that backcourt. And then their bigs are, are mobile enough to, to play out on the perimeter fence there. Yeah, there's there's two things categorically matchup wise that uh, are strength on strength that I want to pick your brain on. But first, personnel wise in the matchup here, I just go through names on both teams and what I've seen from these guys. Uh, to me, Dayton has a big advantage in the front court. And yes, I think you're right. Nevada isn't going to get like completely embarrassed. It's not like they have no answer there, but Holmes obviously has an advantage. And then I think Nevada has an obvious advantage to me in the backcourt. Uh, Lucas has been great. Blackshear, uh, do we count Blackshear as a guard? To me, he's a guard. He's big, which I think poses problems for Dayton, right? I think they're they're best when Keenan Blackshear is their point guard. Yeah. Right. When he's running the ball off the floor and he's kind of just I mean, it's it's different like in terms of what they're running, but it's almost like what you're gonna do with Marcus Damask at Illinois, where it's like, all right, we have this six foot six guy who's not really a point guard, but won't screw it up and he can like just walk it down the floor, back you down, and then play out of that. Uh, yeah. He's very unique. Obviously, he's a, a tremendous challenge. And, and Dayton is a team that plays small guards. Like, I, I'm not really sure where the matchup is. You know, I imagine they're going to have to put, like, Elvis on him. Um, you know, Javon Bennett's a very disruptive defender, but he's a kind of jitterbug, getting passing lanes, not like a big physical wing to guard Blackshear. I think that's the concern. Maybe Kobe Bray gets that assignment. So I don't know how they guard him. Uh, and then they have guys who can run off screens and be opt- opportunistic. I mean, obviously – you know, Jared Lucas is an elite three-point shooter. Hunter McIntosh can make a shot. Um, you know, Foster can hit a shot. Like they're a they're a team that does not take a ton of threes, but they are a team that when they take threes, they make them. And and you know, a big part of that is is Jared Lucas, who you know obviously has much experience at Oregon State and he's one of the best shooters in college basketball. Yeah, I the size of Dayton's guards is a huge problem for me because when I've seen Nevada at their best in Mountain West, they have been really just doubling down repeatedly on Blackshear winning one-on-one situations. And I love the Damask comparison because to me, I, I think Blackshear is going to be able to get whatever he wants offensively in this game. You added the fact he's 25th in the country in assist rate. Like if they want to play through Blackshear, I think it's a great matchup for them to do so just quickly on paper. What's the bigger mismatch? Is it Holmes in the front court versus Nevada's bigs or is it Blackshear versus Dayton's guards? I think the Blackshear matchup is, is a scarier one for me. Holmes is a better player, but I, I think Nevada has the bodies. I, I don't know that Dayton has the bigger guard to deal with Blackshear. Yeah, that would have been my answer as well. Okay, the two strength on strengths I want to ask you about. Uh, Nevada gets to the free throw line a ton. It's a huge part of what they do. They're third in the country at free throw attempt rate. Dayton doesn't foul. They are third in the country at avoiding fouls. On the other end, Dayton is great at shooting. They shoot 40% as a team, third best in the country. Nevada has a good three-point percentage defense, 38th. Now, obviously, percentage defense can sometimes be a little luck involved, but overall, teams don't make a lot of shots from three against Nevada. Uh, To me, those are two areas the game could be decided, so let's go through them both real quick. Like, Does Nevada get to the line as much as they normally do in this game? Is that something you can force against Dayton? I think yes, because they're going to have those size mismatches, right? I mean, the the guys for Nevada that are going to the free throw line a ton and Davidson and then in close games, Jared Lucas. And Jared Lucas is great at like pumping and, you know, getting the kind of Kobe lead in foul and things like that. But realistically, it's Blackshear and Davidson. And like those those guys are going to draw fouls in whatever matchup they play, right? I mean, Blackshear is more physical and Davidson is more crafty. So I, I'm not concerned about Nevada not getting the free throw line. Um, the three-point thing is concerning because uh, it is an interesting matchup because 
I mean, really, you know, Nevada's going to run them off the three, right? They're, they're going to prevent you from taking threes as much as they're going to stop you from making them. Uh, and so to me, if I'm, if I'm Dayton, right. I mean, a big part of their offense is essentially like, all right, if you don't double the, if you double Duran, we're going to spray it and get a wide open shot and we have good shooters, right? Kobe Bryant, I think is the best three point shooter in the country. If he's not now, he was at one point and is very, very high in the national rankings in that, that category. So that would be my worry if I'm Dayton, like if, if, if threes aren't falling, I think it's one of the reasons they struggle on the road is that, you know, when it's harder to make shots, you're in tough atmospheres, you're, you're under pressure uh and teams can can disrupt your you know easy catch and shoot shots then all of a sudden you're in trouble i think that's what what's plagued dayton and losses and it wouldn't surprise me if it's something that's a problem uh, against the bat yeah bray is a good shout fourth best three-point percentage shooter in the country 49 percent on 185 attempts it feels like every single game you flip on i mean he gets them up right he shoots six seven threes a game he just hits them at damn near a coin flip clip which is a huge credit to him uh, for the record, not what he was last year as a shooter either. He was a 37% shooter last year. So um, sometimes you see crazy high years like that from good shooters. He's obviously a high-level shooter, but he has been arguably the best shooter in the country this year. All right, we're going to get to our prediction here. Uh, everything in March on the Sleepers channel is presented by our friends at My Bookie. My Bookie has a bunch of great stuff. If you're looking for a place to bet March Madness, look no further. They got player props. They have bracket contests. You can win up to $25,000 in prizes. Uh, they have futures, odds boosts, you name it. We have a special code, Sleepers, that you can get a deposit match as a first-time user up to $1,000. The link is in the description of this video. Looking at the spread for this game, according to our friends at MyBookie, uh, we have Nevada minus one and a half. So the 10 seed favored against the seven. What side do you like here, Sweeney? I think in a essentially a pick, I'll take Nevada, right? Like I, I think they're playing really well. Um, you know, before that Colorado State lost the conference tournament, I and mean, I think they had won six or seven straight. Um, uh, that included some you know, really impressive road performances at Boise, at Colorado State. Um, you know, they've won at Utah State. Like this, this like to me, like this team is is proven itself away from home. Uh, you know, I think Dayton has has struggled there lately. And um, I don't know, I just I just trust them more to to make big plays in this game. Um I think the travel's all right for them, you know, a little easier than than what you know Dayton's running into. So it feel it feels right to to take Nevada here. Uh Dayton has not gotten blown out a lot, but they also have not really shown they they haven't shown the level that they had early in the season like the the the, the, the that second year that has vanished and I, I worry about that against the high level yeah i'm taking nevada as well i like them to cover i like them to win this game relatively comfortably to be honest i think blackshear is a total unanswerable mismatch for them they're going to need a superhero performance from holmes they could get a superhero performance from holmes and i still think they could lose this game if they don't i think they're completely cooked and uh, i can't get out of here without ending with one more slanderous sentence for how little i believe in dayton if you drop dayton in the mountain west i believe they would not be an ncaa tournament team i believe they would have finished like seventh or eighth in this conference if you drop nevada in uh the a10 i think nevada wins the a10 comfortably that's where I'm at on this. And uh, I know the selection committee was very anti Mountain West from where they seeded some of these teams. Uh, somehow, some way, they didn't care about Dayton's lack of championships in the A10, and they get the at large as a seven seed. That shocked me here. What, one of the most surprising seed results on this line. I love Nevada. Thanks to Kevin Sweeney for being here. Uh, we will have a recap up later this weekend of this game. We have previews and recaps for every single game in the NCAA tournament. Subscribe to the channel so you can see them all.